Good evening and welcome to our weekly edition of Truth Talk. This is uh, episode 16, so we're getting right on through. We're coming down to the end of our season, so we've kind of scheduled them out for the rest of this time before we take a little break from our weekly Truth Talk session. So uh, we are, we're excited to have closed out the first um, 16 episodes now of Truth Talks. So that's amazing that just a little idea that we had has, has kind of developed in, into to things that um, we had, I guess how they have. So we're jumping back in this evening to our discussion on the image of God. As you can tell, we kick off the holiday season, the Christmas season with, um, with this episode and we have great decorations, a way to really um, focus on what the season is all about. So we look forward to, to that. And we also look forward to bringing you hopefully a special episode on Christmas Day, I think is what is in the plans now, a, a Christmas truth talk. So we look forward to that and, and um, talking to about some specifically um, what Christmas is, birth of a savior, that type of thing coming up um, on Christmas Day. So that's a little bit of what's coming forward. But for now, we're gonna get back into uh, the image of God. So we left off last week talking about, you know, that, that we have something as, as humans in us that the other creatures that God created did not have. So we talked about, you know, our, our intellect and our ability to, to do different tasks and, and see those through. And so now we're going to kind of move into the next layer of being an image of God, and and um, and the question that we that we that we pull all this from is, what does it mean that that we we are the image of God? And so what so what does that mean to to us in a biblical setting? So what did that mean when God created man? And what does that mean to the to the children of Israel? And then moving forward throughout biblical history and and to where we are now. Um, yeah, so the first uh, rule of Bible interpretation is to try to see it through the eyes of the people that are being spoken to. If, if you can get that concept first, it'll help you as you walk through to make sure you don't get things out of focus or out of context. Uh, and, we got, and so we got to remember when Moses is the author of, of Genesis in the first several books of the Bible and um, and. So he is writing in a specific time period. Um, and it has been thousands of years since Genesis 1 by the time Moses writes it. And, and we move through all this. So he's got all this humanity history that he's trying to make us understand. I think he's trying to drive or the spirit is leading him to author, you know, why being an image bearer is so important. And, you know, so I just was doing a little bit of research. And so, you know, we, we get all the way over to the Ten Commandments and, and it tells us, um, you know, not to make idols, not to make a, 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 a formed image. That's you know, and first, not to worship. That's the first commandment. That's uh, not uh, make any uh, grave of an image. That's right. Not to make a form image. And you think, why is that? Well, that's because he, God has already made something in his image. So why would we form something, especially something to worship in his image? But we have to remember, so I, I did a little bit of research. In ancient history, having idols were very common. Um, they were used in temples for ceremonies um, and because there was this idea that in temples, it was, it, that is where humans and their gods connected. And so that is why they had these, these, these images in there. And oftentimes kings, rulers, whatever, had idols made in their image because they were the embodiment of the God for that people. So it also gave a certain caste system or social structure you know, it, it, to, use, to use idols and imagery and that kind of thing, you know, it's what kept things in order. And I think when we go back to, to Genesis 1 and we talk about God created order out of chaos, isn't it funny that, that now humanity has taken that and used idolatry to keep things in order? You know, while God made our image as a way of 
subduing and keeping things in order. We took that mindset and philosophy. Except by doing that, they did the reverse. They caused chaos. Chaos. Yeah. That's right. The so reverse, we had the reverse of what, mm -hmm. uh, what they had anticipated to take place. Yeah. If in in the in the biblical story, the first true mention of idols will be in uh, the Abraham story, and that's we find out that his father Terah was an idol worshiper, and so. Um, so uh, that's our first, uh, but so, so, you know, e even if you go back to the Tower of Babel story, we realize they were building an image to worship a false god, but we're not told they were idol worshiping. Right. I think they were, but we're not specifically told that. And regardless, they were forming something from their own desire to become like gods, you know, or reach the gods. And, and because they thought, I mean, if you, if you go back and, and read it, you know, Lamech thought a lot of himself, you know, and, and all the family, I mean, he, a lot of things happened with that whole, through that line, because men put a lot of, of self-importance. They, they thought of themselves. But, but the important thing for us to gather out of that story is those folks, sometimes we read and say the image of God, we see so... We're so conscious of all kind of images that images don't bring the same focus today that it would have been written in that day. Because, I mean, we've got computers that have all kind of images on them. We, we have theaters where you go and see all kind of images. There's images of pictures all over your house. That Their images are everywhere. They're not special. Right. And in that day... It was. It was I mean, having a replication of something was very special um, and and so if you apply that to human beings and God making us in his image how how very special that designation was he created the birds and all this other parts but only of his creation only humans bear his image it doesn't say the angelic beings bear his image even even though they are this awesome and mighty creation they don't necessarily bear his image either. And I wrote down something that I read. It said, humans are the realization of God's presence, his temple on earth. His rule is not through kings and kingdoms, but through us and, and what we were created to do, the purpose that he has given us from Genesis 1-1. But it is so deeply ingrained in fallen creation to want to see, to have that picture that, that it is very difficult. You see, even in this story that we're listening at, as uh, Moses leads the children of Israel out of Egypt and rescues them from the king who was the image of the Ra, the sun god, destroys them in the nine plagues and then the tenth plague, the sun, and gets them out, you would have thought that would have destroyed that image process. Soon as Moses gets them out, he goes up onto the mountain to get the... They rejoice. Yeah. They, they're like singing praises to God. I mean, it, and, and there's, a, there's a song in, I forget what chapter of Exodus, but him and Miriam, yep. Moses and Miriam break out in this song of praise. It's poetry in the middle of all this narrative. And they're singing this song of praise. And just 40 days later, later here they have built a golden calf as an image. Now they, if you read the scripture carefully, they ascribe to it Yahweh. Yes. They, they say this is our God, Yahweh. But they have made expressly, and Moses already delivered them the commandments and gone back up. Thou shalt not make unto me any graven image. And here they have then had Aaron, the high priest, mm -hmm. build them what? An, an image. image. And it's funny, they, they used... And it says he collected all of their gold, which would have been the earrings that designated them as a slave or the ring that designated them as this person's slave or the bracelet that designated them as this person's slave. So they took the, the physical things that said they were slaves and created this image, which, which to me, you take that, well, yeah, and they're still slaves. You know, they're slaves to their own desire. They're slaves to their own their own, de the, the, the deceitfulness the of their heart. The fallen man, really, mm -hmm. slaves to their own evil heart. And that is what mankind is. A man without 
having given himself over. That's the reason you hear the psalmist and you hear David, Lord, create in me a new heart. Uh, you know, it's what man, and that's what God says he's going to give to us, a new heart. That's the reason we have to have a new creation. His man's heart is evil, wicked, deceitful. The image of what we have been created in was so marred uh, by Adam and Eve that we have lost that image. We had to have someone come for us to show us what a recreated image would look like. And that's what God has been doing is recreating. And that's what God wants to do for us is to recreate that image in us. It's, it's, um, I have this, that's what made, that's what God was calling out a people for. That's what made the children of Israel so unique. They didn't have these images that represented their gods because they didn't have gods. They had one God, you know, and that's what made him so unique. When they made them as a people so unique is in all of these places that they were around. We, and see, we, again, we don't have the right viewpoint of the air. We think, oh, this is like back at the beginning of time in the far, far away land, there were no other people around, but there were multitudes of other nations. You know, first of all, we already have the Egyptians. We've got the, um, you've got the Moabites. You've got the, I mean, all these people that we've already talked about that dispersed from the Tower of Babel and became nations and, and people groups and everything. And they're worshiping their gods. And, and that was what made them so unique in the time from when God called Abraham out from Ur is that you're going to be my people and you're going to only worship me. And that's not what the other people groups did. The other people groups worshiped all kind of the, um, um, they had all kind of gods. And there was this history of these gods and how, so if you go back and you research what other cultures believe, they believe that the, the earth was in creation was formed out of this struggle amongst all the different deities. And each thing would have a God. You'd have a God that might be God, God over harvest and you would have a God over fertility. And a God you, of the hunt, uh, yeah, of God, all that. this kind of stuff. But that's how they, if you, if you research some of these more primitive cultures, they believed that the earth was created among, when these gods were fighting for power amongst each other. And, and so that's why there is this strata of gods that's over things because the one who's over kind of like creation and existence, that's the one that ultimately won the war. And, and so that's why there's this fight in and amongst people groups about whose God is the best and whose God can deliver them. When it comes to the Hebrew people, they have the one true God. And that's why we say that so often. We've gone too far ahead, but we'll stop. I'll say this, then we'll go back. Uh, that's the reason when you were conquered by another nation, and that, that, that was a sign that your God was stronger than, than, than the other gods. My, my God won. So, but we, we jumped way ahead there in the image of God. We need to look back at how Adam and Eve were created, how they were originally the image bearers what they were created to do, what, what was their purpose? I, why, did God get, why did God make them different from all the rest of the creation? And what was their purpose? And, uh, and, 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 and what should they have looked like if they had not sinned? And, uh, and, and then we can see how far we've fallen, and, but we can also see where we're going. Right. And if we miss that part, we've missed the image of God. You know, we've had this discussion going on at church since some of the after talks that we've been having with our congregation is that we have this idea, and, and you and I have a little bit of different viewpoint on this, that, that Eden was perfect. That God created the Garden Eden, Eden, and it was perfect. Well, if it was perfect, there would have been no work for Adam to do to rule and reign and subdue and have dominion. What God created was the perfect potential. Well, you have to define the word perfect. Right. And we see it differently in 2020, what perfect is and what, what was intended. There was no sin right. there. There was no corruption, no death. But uh, certainly the trees had to be pruned. Uh, you had to pick fruit to eat. I mean, it didn't just fall off the tree and prepared and ready. Uh, the ground had to be tended. It did not have thorns and thistles 
but it still had to be tended. It had to be looked. They were farmers. That's what God called them to do. There was work to be done. As a matter of fact, there's, if you read, I think if you read outside the garden itself, the world certainly would have had to be, you would have had to create gardens out there. It was just a grown up world. Something to think about, I will say, just makes because we, we don't have as many people with us tonight because of other activities going on in our church. But, you know, did, did God create everything in the seven days? He, he created the potential for everything. Right. So, um, and this is what somebody I was listening to, a, a different podcast and preacher I was listening to. So, you know, he, you said they don't have the thorns and the thistles. Maybe not like we think of them now, but were they already created? And just they weren't the burden that they are now? Because like on roses, thorns protect the roses, you know, and, and things like that. So, and that's what I think where we get, we get caught up in thinking perfection versus purpose, you know, and, and these things um, served a purpose you know, in what they were created to be and the effect of sin on creation, everything's purpose is twisted once we have the fall, you know. And I mean, it's, we don't know. I mean, and we're not going to know this side of heaven, you know, what, what that was. But I think that's something that I haven't really ever thought about until we started having this kind of congregational talk about we need to understand the environment in Eden was not perfect like we think of perfection so therefore Adam and Eve did have a purpose that God created them. But they did not have the struggle, struggle. That, right. that we would, we would I mean, have today. Because it clearly says in scripture that, they, that it's the, going to be tough. Yeah. You know, it um, would not yield its, its, its I'm trying to turn there. Really it would not yield its uh, product its fruit as easily as it yielded to Adam and Eve that uh, they would earn it by the sweat of their brow. So previously it it, it was not the struggle that it is now. Because he says in um, chapter 3, verse 17, then he said to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. So it doesn't say I'm creating thorns and thistles for you, but it's going to propagate them for you. You're not going to have to, you're going to have to work to keep them from taking over. Um, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground from out of it you were taken. So I think that's, I mean, we have to kind of set aside maybe some of our preconceived notions so that we can really, again, peel back the, the layers of what our purpose as an image bearer is. It wasn't that Adam and Eve were never going to do work. It wasn't that they weren't going to have jobs. That It wasn't, I mean, because God told them they were going to have to, um, to be fruitful and multiply and subdue and have dominion. They were have, had jobs, important jobs to do. Uh, if outside the garden, as they were to procreate and have children, then their, their task was going to be, which is a lot like what our task is going to be in the new heaven and new earth, they were going to have to teach those children how to subdue that world, uh, how, to, how to live, how to eat, how to bring it, how to make a garden out of that world. Right. And so they had the picture of the garden that they had lived in, and God was teaching them how to subdue that garden, how to, how to, to cause it to be their home. Of course, in their home they had heaven, heaven and earth. And so they were going to have to teach their children as they moved out of the garden and produced their own garden. And if I understand right, God would provide in that garden a place where heaven and earth would meet, and it would have been Adam and Eve's job to have taught those children about that, and that's how this world would have been populated and would have, would have functioned. And in just, just as we skip forward just a tad, just so we put those two thoughts together, in the new heaven and new earth, us, the redeemed... Yeah, we, we skipped <laughs> from Genesis to Revelation, just like that. Uh, but in that world... The Bible says the church specifically has been called out to be heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And our job will to be rule and reign with him. The earth has been given specific promises, and that is to the children of Abraham and the nations, it says. So the children of Abraham, Israel, 
and those favored nations that go into the millennial and then into the new earth, they will be supervised by the Lord Jesus and us. And we will teach them how to live in that heaven on earth situation, how to subdue that world, how to live and then, not only that, once we teach them that, we will teach them science. We will teach them all the things. And then, this great big universe that God has made that is just out there. We, we only will, know a speck of it. We, only, we will teach them how to inhabit and subdue it. And so... If you think about God created us to partner with Him to, you know, He, he created the world and He said it was good and it was very good. But He didn't he made this creation with the potential for great and very great. And you look at the, the, the strides man has made with the spirit restrained on this world, you know, and, and not being fully under the authority and leadership of God. And think, I mean, it's amazing some of the things that, that God has let mankind do even in our fallen state, just think of what we can accomplish or what could have been accomplished. And then because we know that didn't happen, what could be accomplished once we are fully partnered again with God, once we are again dwelling with him. Right now we're dwelling separated from God only because he cannot come. He cannot meet with us as, as unrighteous people. And it is through his, his covenant with us, fulfilled through Jesus, that we are able to have that hope of, of once again, you know, walking with God and, and being able to, to dwell with him. We still have the handicap of a body that is not suited for our spirit. As a matter of fact, our spirit is not capable, so the Holy Spirit has been given as a guarantee. He walks with us now to carry us until... We either have this body dissolved or we have the taking away of the church and a new body is given that can, our spirit can inhabit And that's something there. we as Christians really need to let sit with us. And this is kind of getting a little off topic of image bearer. But it, it, well, that is our image. That's when we will come back yeah, to the image. With is God. that, you know, you hear about, you know, your spirit groans within you. You know, that is because that is, we are not made. We, this is not capable of doing that that it was created to do. So it struggles against itself, especially when you are you have become a Christian and you fall up underneath the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has to help you prune these things back and, and, and shape you and, and, and make you and reform you into a new creature. And so, so if we as the church would just kind of sit on that, like what God had created us to be and why we have this struggle and and Dale, we're going to need our table back because we're, we're running out of places to put everything on. Romans chapter 7 I believe let me look at it uh, right quick like and uh, this is the Apostle Paul I think that's where it's going to be um, maybe not uh, he says oh wretched man that I am let me see if I can find that right quick like I uh, thought it was the seventh chapter uh, I don't believe it's the end of uh, the eighth I would chapter. normally have my phone now, but I keep forgetting and putting it beside me and creating noise and feedback in the system, so I quit keeping my phone. Oh, here it is. See, uh, it says, uh, when, when, I, when I want to do things, I can't do them, and the things I don't want to do, I do do. He's talking about how limited he is uh, in, uh, in the man that we are, and so... Um, um, we, won't, we won't take time up. We can we can look at it later. I was Romans seven twenty four. Thank you. I thought it was the seventh chapter. So we have great congregation who does have their phones on them and can Google that real quick for us. It says um, I'll, I'll I'll back up to the twenty first. It says I find then a law a principle that evil is present within me. This is the apostle Paul now, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, that is our spirit. But I see another law in my members, that's this body I live in, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind I serve myself, so then with 
the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he is that, picturing that struggle that in this flesh that is incapable of doing all that it should do. But we know in the spirit, our spiritual being, what we're, we should be capable of doing. So how awesome is the purpose that God created us for that thousands of years later we are still struggling to, you know, within ourselves because we are not fulfilling that purpose that our spirit knows we should be fulfilling. You know, there's something, and I, and I say this all the time, that, you know, people fill up this, this emptiness within their spirit with all kind of stuff when it's the only thing that can fill it up is God. You know, but they'll look for everything on the face of the earth to fill it up. Good deeds, um, busyness, you know, doing good works, having hobbies, having this, that, and the other, trying to fill that void that only God can, can feel, and that is because he created us for a purpose. To and God says, him. stand still and know that I am God. And that's the thing we don't do enough of, I don't do enough of, is to stand still and let God speak into me who he is and his purposes. Because we can't do that. We don't, our, our, this body cannot do that. And that has to be a revelation. And the Bible, we are to live by revelation. Now, not outside this book, but we are to live by revelation of the book. And so the book, you don't have to come up with other revelation. This book has more than your mind can ever conceive of. So um, Another quote I, I wrote down from listening to some of my podcasts, because I use podcasts as part of my devotion time. And um, it says, when man, he, the podcaster said, when man fell, he exchanged the glory of the uncorruptible God for our creature comforts, for what we desire that are completely corruptible. You know, and... And we, we lost our purpose along that way. You know, it says in the Bible, um, it says here in Genesis uh, chapter 3, verse uh, 7. It's, and this is that the woman has seen that the tree was good for food and they've eaten it and she gave it to her husband. It says, then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. You know, once they ate, their eyes became, I and mean, we've talked about this so many times, but over and over again, the story of the Bible is telling us, you know, that we were incorruptible, but chose to make ourselves corruptible. Once they ate, their eyes were open. They had walked along innocently and unknowing of how mighty the image they had was. But once they ate, they realized their image had become fragile and that there was nothing they could do to repair the damage that they had done to the image that God had created. Actually, that visible image immediately faded away because... They had the cover, I mean... Yeah, because the Bible said the, the moment they sinned, they died spiritually. They didn't wait the, the, the other 900 and something years. I don't know how long. It doesn't say how long Eve lived, but Adam lived 965 years. So it didn't wait the, the 965 years if they counted from his fall, his, his lifespan. Uh, he died spiritually immediately. I know I kind of envision in my head, so I can keep it together, that Adam and Eve were created with the form of man that, that God gave them, but over that form they had the spirit of God. Yeah, absolutely. They wore their, and, if I understand the Bible right, and I think I do, they wore their spirit on the outside. Yeah. The spirit is to mm -hmm. be worn, and it will be worn on the outside in eternity. And it's very difficult for us to, because you know, it's less God, woo, concept and everything, but, but there was something over the physical dust that God had made it, that God made it, gracious, that God had made us, um, that, that was that, that ability that gave us the ability to that gave man Adam and Eve that ability to to be with him and that was that spirit that he breathed in them well the Bible says that God is a spirit the essence of God and then it also says God is light so light is the presence of spirit and so that light is what surrounded Adam and Eve. That is what joins us to God. That is what he talks about in Revelation chapter 21 and 22 then, that he is the light 
and we will be lights with him. We will have bodies, visible, tangible bodies. When Jesus was transfigured, uh, they uh, recognized his visible body, body and but could it also touch the out, tangible. But it also shone uh, as one that had been bleached, foolish. Right. And so there is something the Bible mentions that 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 person that is spiritual alive shines. I believe it is that that what Adam and Eve had about them, and that's what they noticed was gone immediately. That's the reason they they said they were naked. That's the reason they realized they needed a covering. It's not that they didn't have clothes on. They, they, they didn't. Uh, I, I, they maybe. no longer had the presence of God. God. If they'd have had clothes on, it wouldn't have mattered. The, the nakedness was not from flesh. It was from that presence of God they were naked. It's almost metaphorical in the sense. So, so what then? So we, we're out of time for today. That went by super quickly. But, you know, so we were made in God's image for a purpose. So what do we do now and where do we go as a people, both biblically and now going forward into, into humanity? You know, how do we get to where God wants to be? And that'll be what we talk about next episode. Um, when we talk about how can we be recreated and how God made a way for us to be recreated, for that image that we have now to be destroyed and him recreate the image so that once again we can live with him. Which is the story and, of the Bible, so we need to talk about reunite it. Reunite yeah. with him. Um, in eternity. So we hope you we hope you were able to understand. I feel like we might have been a little less straightforward today, but there's some there's just some things you kind of have to address so that you can watch the Bible unfold um, in a way that makes sense. But, but I'm really looking forward to getting into what because because we are that being in the process of being remade remade in His image, um, and and how do we do that? And because it meant something different to to you know, in the, in the Old Testament than it does here being in the church age. So we will get to that next episode. We thank you for joining us tonight. If you have questions, don't forget to send them to our email address, abcworth1 at gmail.com. It's abcworth1 at gmail.com, and we'll be happy to answer or attempt to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>